Hello everyone, welcome back in Lockdown Cooking. Um, the other day I received a nice little hamper through the post and in there I found um, some chocolates some crisps and some other bits and bobs and there was a little note. I'm going to read it out for you. It was written a little something to let you know that we are thinking of you in these difficult times from the PTA and Ferm Academy. So I'm going to dedicate this video to all the parents who are thinking about us and uh, the members of senior leadership who thought about sending us this really nice little package. And what I thought to show you today is how to cook um, tagine. And tagine is a traditional Moroccan dish. I did a lot of traveling in Morocco, I lived there for a while um, and I've learned how to cook um, in one of these fancy tagine pots. Now, uh, this is the one I'm going to be cooking today. However, if you don't have one of those, you can do this exactly in the same way, in the same techniques that I'm going to teach you with a slow cooker. Um, you can do that also with one of those pots um, that you can put in the oven that will work as well. Okay, so it works with all these um, because basically it's quite it's, um, slow cooking what we do today. So, tagine. Here we go. What do we need for tagine? We, what I'm going to do today, I thought to use a selection of traditional things that you can find in Morocco, which is definitely tomatoes and chicken. You find peppers in there, onion, garlic, typical Moroccan cuisine, um, carrots, um, olives, coriander, uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and the basics. Um, for your spices in Moroccan cuisine is always cumin and smoked paprika um, the same as our Mexican cuisine to be honest so these are the spices you're going to need what have I forgotten? Ah, uh, courgettes they're a bit weird shaped and this is because they come from my garden I'm going to be cooking this today so here we go tagine wash my hand I've tied my hair up let's get on with this first things first is um, let's put some olive oil at the bottom of my um, tagine pot. Can you see from there? Yeah. Okay, you can be a little bit generous with it because Moroccan people really like the um, olive oil. Okay, next thing, basically what we're going to do now is create the base which is the sauce of your um, tagine. So we're going to use tomatoes for the sauce. Um, I, I will cut some tomatoes on the go and decide how many we're going to do like this. But basically you want to fill them just like this in this pot here. If you put too many tomatoes it will create too much sauce and it will overflow. So if you have one of these pots be careful with your tomatoes. Okay, um, you can cut them in any way you want. Um, you can make little circles and squares. It doesn't really matter to be honest the way you do it because they're going to become your sauce. All right. Okay, great. Let's put it here. Okay, let's have a look. off and the roots just like that and if you look at it I'm just trying to cut till I'm just slice it just till I am at the peeling I'm going to try to peel it off just like that I make a line and I do exactly the same on the other way look at this here we go if I slice it a bit here, I can easily peel this off from one side there you go Okay, so again, your onion, you can cut it in quarters, in eight, in sixteenths. I'm doing the bridge technique, I'm using the flat bit, put it like this, maybe 
one more with the bridge here, same there, and I'm going to use the claw, just like this, it doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong, if you like little bits of um, onions you can make, you can dice them a little bit, if you want bigger bits, you make bits, it doesn't really matter. Alright, it's up to you. Perfect! Alright, next one, garlic. Like the French people, Moroccans really use a lot of garlic in their kitchen. Okay, so peel the garlic first. Alright, so again, um, it's a bit like the onion, you can take the end bit soft like that. Score it a bit. You can then take off, be really careful not to cut yourself. Fantastic. Right, one more. So, end bit. There you go. Score it. And peel it off. Okay. Alright, remember with your onion, your garlic, you squash it and then you chop it really roughly. It doesn't have to be done in a certain way, just chop it. You'll be alright. No worries. Oh. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm done with my base now. Last thing we need is a few more bits actually. A, a bit of coriander. Not too much coriander because it gets very empowering as this. If you like it a lot, go wild. If you're not too sure for the first time. Maybe just do a little bit less, but look at this, little handful. Okay, so you can start chopping like this for a while if you want to. I'm going to teach you another little trick here. If you bring it all together, just like this, in a little bowl, just squeeze it really, really close to each other. You see, I'm holding it tight, using the claw. I try to finally chop it just like that. this all done it didn't take too long mm, I just smells already really really good smell of coriander is brilliant okay so next we would like to have some salt in there there you go I tend to go a little bit wild with my salt when it comes to a sauce. Alright, then for your paprika again and your cumin as much as you want. Um, I would say roughly between a, a teaspoon and a tablespoon depending for how many people you do. So just do like this. Something like that will be enough for me. Same with cumin. Roughly the same, 50-50. If you don't like cumin, put a bit less of it. That is fine. Great. All right, so next thing is, so this is my sauce. I'm gonna put my hands in there and just mix it really well. Um, and then I can move on to the next steps. So that is my basic here. So just, you can already squeeze it with your fingers if you want to. Just go wild if you want. There you go. Beautiful. And it's a pity you cannot smell it through your screen, but it smells really, really, really good. All right. Hop, hop. <laughs> right, next part is my chicken. Okay. So, when you're doing tagine, um, best thing I would suggest is to um, dice your chicken in small little parts. It will cook easier and quicker. Um, so not too big, please. You can you can 
make little um, stripes. It's up to you. See, maximum something like that. Okay, remember, okay, when you use a knife, there's no point pushing down, it doesn't work. You need to let your knife do the job, just like that. It just goes by itself. I barely put any effort whatsoever in there. Okay. There you go. Now, it doesn't have to be chicken. If you like fish, you can do it with fish. If you have to make the meatballs, you can do that too. Fantastic. Okay. Put them here. Just spread them over a bit evenly. Okay. And what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to build a little tower, basically a cone, like this one, of vegetables. Okay. So go. Now I've used um, chicken so I'm going to wash my knife and my hands. Okay, let's get on with the carrots. Remember everyone, when you peel your carrots, not towards you, away from you, you really don't want to stab yourself with your peeler. And remember to use the middle part which is the sharp part. Okay, there you go. It goes by itself, the blade does it for you. The end bits, remember, you just chop them off like that, using the blades. I don't know if you can see from there. Hop, one, two carrots. And three, remember also how to hold your carrots. Just like that, don't do it like this, you, you really don't want to start peeling your fingers. Just like this, you turn it a bit with your fingers. Nice. Okay, alright, next one. Well, let's just chop these in little bits. Okay, so I use the bridge, slice this one in two. Okay. Nice. All right, on my chicken, I'm going to put a little bit of salt, there we go, a little bit of pepper. Let's get a little bit of cumin on there. And some paprika. Nice. Okay, and look, I put my carrots on the top, just like this. I'm trying to create this little cone. Okay, great stuff. You don't need this anymore. What's left? Pepper, all right, and my courgettes, and my mini sweet corn. All right, pepper, guys, use your thumb. Push this one in down, you hear the pop, pop, open it up, and look, really easy. Use your palm, and get rid of all the seeds like that. No seeds, same here. Hop, okay. So, my, um, what I'm going to do with my pepper and my courgettes, I'm going to um, make like long little bits like this and basically we're going to build up this tower, you're going to see it in a minute. So, slice them along, just like this, great. Off you go. Oh. My pepper and my courgette. 
Good, the end bit's off. Mm -hmm. All right, slice it in two, and maybe two or three times, just depending how big your courgette is. All right, so look, I've got all these little strips now, and they're roughly the same length as my mini sweet corn. Okay, and we're going to build it like this. All right. Oh. Beautiful to watch, uh, beautiful to see. In French, you say, on mange avec les yeux, which means you eat with your eyes. So, if something looks good without tasting it, you already have an idea that it's going to be good. Okay, great. Okay, I've got a little bit of space left here, so I'm just going to dice the rest of my pepper and add it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember you can do this exactly in the same way in a slow cooker, you just build it up from there, okay? All good. Right, little trick for my uh, opening a jar here. If you find that the jar is a little bit difficult, you take a buttering knife and just hit it a bit like that. Oh, it should be able to open by itself. Okay, let's get some olives. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around here in a circle with all my olives and that will just look fantastic. Now if you don't like olives, you don't have to put them in there, but that is traditional Moroccan cuisine, so let's do it like these guys do there. Mm -hmm. I'm good to go. All right, I'm not sure if you guys can see. I'm just going to try to put it a bit closer to the camera. Look at this. Whoa, I just broke it. Doesn't matter. Put it back together. Okay, put the lid on. I've put my oven at 150 degrees Celsius. And roughly you can go between 140, 160, something like this. You leave your tagine in, in there for an hour, two hours. Um, now normally, tagine is actually not put in the oven. Um, you can use uh, gas, but I don't have gas, so I can't do it. Or you put it on a cold barbecue, and um, my little cold barbecue broke as well. So I'm going to put this one in the oven. Uh, but if you put it on gas, you put it on low heat for the same an hour to two hours, depending on how quick it goes. So it means that during this time, always go and have a little look, see if it's cooking. Little trick as well, if your sauce, if, it comes, if you have too much liquid, what I tend to do is I put a little a spoon here, just like that, and just make it evaporate a little bit, okay? But let's try to keep all these juices in for the moment, okay? Let's put it in the oven. There you go. It's a bit heavy. All right. See you now, two. Okay, it has been two and a half hours, roughly a little bit late. It took a little bit longer than I expected, um, but I think it's going to be ready now. So let's have a look. Oh, it's quite heavy. There we go. Okay. Oh. 
Beautiful. Mm. Okay, so if you want to look if your tagine is ready, the only thing you need to do is just check if your vegetables are crunchy. Mm. And they are, they're good, maybe no, soft, sorry. And then what you must make sure is that your meat is cooked. So let's just get some chicken out at the bottom here. That looks good to me. Perfect. Alright, so let's put it back so it looks good for me to serve at the table. Alright, this is how you make tagine, as simple as this. Um, traditionally in Morocco, what do you do? You eat this with bread, everybody gathers around uh, this pot and you eat it together with bread and you use your bread. As, um, as a fork and basically you eat with your hands. I wouldn't suggest to do it like this nowadays with the virus hanging around uh, maybe just serve different portions on um, a plate that would probably be a better idea at this stage. Um, another way of uh, eating this is having a bit of couscous on the side there's also something you can do um, I've got a separate video on how to make couscous if you'd like to have a look at it. Okay so here we go Tagine, Moroccan traditional dish. Okay, give it a try. I hope you enjoy it. And again, um, this video was dedicated for all the parents who support us. Thank you very much for what you do and what you've done. And also, thank you very much for the people at Farm Academy who made the effort to say thank you to us. Okay, see you later, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.